We are here at the Wookiee's secret tuning dungeon to do some science because we want to figure out what spring rates to equip his Datsun 510 with. He's done some different stuff with the front suspension. There isn't a lot of good information out there about what spring rates work well on this car for road, ra road racing purposes. Not with this configuration anyway. Yeah, so we're going to measure stuff and move suspension around and do some math type things to show you guys how to figure out what spring rates to equip your weird project car with. So Tim Hortons, you need to sponsor <laughs> us, and uh, Rockstar needs to sponsor us as well. Or any other caffeinated drink. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who like reading, we have a couple of stories that JP wrote about his Datsun 510. So go there and read about it. For those of you who don't like to read or... Or can't. Or can't. <laughs> We're gonna give you a quick walk around of the car before we get to the suspension stuff. So, yeah, tell us about this thing. Uh, well, it's currently in a few pieces, but um, it's a 72 Datsun 510 two-door sedan, not a coupe, because they have a different C pillar, and you'll get yelled at on the internet if you say that. Okay. Um, F20C from an S2000, factory AP1 six-speed, uh, STI R180 diff, factory 510 half shafts in the back, Factory rear suspension converted to a coilover on where the shock would normally mount, and the front suspension is from an S chassis. So it's um, S13 stuff, right? It's S S13 knuckle with a custom control arm, custom TC rod, and uh, 180 SX brakes, which I think are the same as Ultima and a Maxima. Or something. Oh, is that right? Okay. So part of the challenge with the front end suspension tuning on this car is that because he's put S13 stuff on here and he's got custom lower control arms. What the internet tells us the motion ratios are, and we'll tell you a bit more about motion ratios in a bit, but what the internet tells us for this car doesn't really apply anymore, which is why we need to do some measuring and figure out what the real motion ratio is, and then we can choose spring rights from there. So with that said, I think we'll have the Wookiee crawl under the car, and he'll do some measurements, and we'll talk about what he's doing so that you know what he's doing. Put the big guy under the car. And we'll try not to show any plumber's crack, we promise. <laughs> Tim Hortons, sponsorship. <laughs> Bring it on. So there's three ways to pick spring rates. One way is to get on the internet and find out what other people are using and hope that that works. Can't really do that in JP's car as we've already explained. The other two ways is to either measure the control arms, the pickup point distances and so on, which we'll show you how to do right now. And then the third way is to actually stroke the suspension and see how much the wheel moves relative to how much the spring is being compressed. So motion ratio just means how much the wheel is moving relative to how much the spring is being compressed, and the difference between those two gives you a ratio. So if you have a one-to-one -one motion ratio, it means the wheel's moving one inch and the spring is being compressed the same amount, one inch. We know in the back of this car, it's got more than a two-to-one ratio. So for every two inches of wheel travel, we only get one inch of spring travel. And that means you need more spring rate to have the same effect as what's going on in the front where you have the one-to-one -one ratio. Anyway, if that's confusing you, we'll throw up some formulas here. Bing, motion ratio. You can Google it too. In fact, I'm gonna write a story for you just so you see all the math that goes on. So we're gonna show you the measurement method now, which involves measuring from the, the inner pivot point of the lower control arm out to the center line of the spring and then out to the outer lower ball joint. And the difference between those two links is what allows us to figure out the motion ratio. With all that said, I know a lot of words. JP will crawl under there and take some measurements using his fancy plumb bobs here. Can we call those plumb bobs? Uh, plumb bob sockets? Yeah, sure. <laughs> green, green string and sockets. And we've really only, we've done that to make it easier for you to see the measurements that we're taking and for us to make it easier to measure basically, yeah. right? Because the control arm has some bends in it as you'll see. So let's take some measurements. All right. All right, so from the inner control arm mount to a line drawn down from where the spring would theoretically intersect the control arm. Yes. Which is the first one. Yeah, so like to the midline of the spring. Yeah. That is about there. Okay. And then from inner to outer ball joint. So out back on this car, it is the stock suspension configuration, correct? Ish. Ish. Uh, the coilover, the spring used to live here in the spring pocket. Right. And now it was converted to a coilover setup. Yes, so, where the shock was. Right. The stock setup would have the spring on the semi-trailer arm normally. Now it's on the shock itself. But the geometry is all original. It's got the original uh, semi-trailing arm in there, mm -hmm. which has two pivot points that attach to the chassis. 
So your inner pivot point for measurement purposes is basically a line through those two pivot points. Anywhere along that line would be your pivot axis. And then off of that axis you would draw a line straight through the spring if it were still on the control arm, which it isn't. So in this case we're going to just draw it out to the center line of the spring on the damper and then out to the center of the hub for the other, other distance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're plumb bob up back here. We'll take those measurements and then we'll have all we need to, to calculate motion ratios front and rear. And after that we'll do the whole stroking thing. I know, wait for the stroking. The happy ending is coming, okay? It's worth noting that the rear and front have been set to ride height. Right, yeah, we did uh, set the ride height front and rear to what it would be at if the car was on the ground. And that's important because it puts your, your arms all in the correct position for these kinds of measurements. Now, motion ratios can actually change as the suspension moves, which we'll show you when we're stroking the suspension. Um, but for this style of measurement, it's best to have the car at ride height for, for when it's on the ground. So that's where we're at. Measuring out from there to a line drawn down from the spring is exactly 19 inches. Okay. And then out to the tire contact patch with my spacer on because I run them and there's zero offset wheels. Yep. Is very close actually. 19. That needs to stop swaying. I'm going to say 19 and, three, 19 and a half. Okay. So step one to stroking the suspension was to have JP come in early and remove the springs. That just lets us move the suspension without any resistance from the spring. It makes it easier to measure the distance on the shock shaft. So to do that, we've put a zip tie around the shock shaft. And then as it compresses, when we let it back down again, the zip tie will stay to the point that it had been pushed up to. We can measure that, that change in distance versus uh, a change in distance from the bottom of the rotor to the ground, which will give us our, our movement at the wheel. And then, uh, like we said before, if it moves one inch at the shock and we've raised the, the knuckle one inch, then we know our motion ratio is one to one. It'll be pretty close to that because with Mac front strut, it's generally very close to one to one. Based on our math, we think it's around a 0 0.97 motion ratio. So we'll see how close we get to that based on this method. And at the damper, we have, it looks like, is really close to one inch. From the bottom. Yeah. Seven eighths? Oh, more than that. Yeah. It's like 15 sixteenths, almost exactly one inch actually. So we're gonna go up two inches this time. We'll remeasure it two inches. That'll start to paint a picture of where the motion, motion ratios are at as we stroke the suspension through its range of travel. Um, so yeah, let's go up to 18 inches now. Okay, let's say that's 18 inches. And, oh yeah. Ooh, wow, again, again, it's like between 15 sixteenths and the two inch mark. So pretty consistent. I would say the math that we did where it's like at 0.95 or 0.97 is pretty close. pretty close. So this is just shy of a one to one motion ratio, which means the spring rate, if it's 500, uh, 500 pounds, the wheel rate would also be very close to 500 pounds because that's, they're not seeing any spring rate loss because of, now there is also the, the spring angle issue. Mm -hmm. You have to factor in a correction angle or a correction factor if the spring is lying back on an angle. Mm -hmm. We've taken that measurement before and we know that it's around, what was it, 82 degrees or something like that? I think, yeah, it was high 70s or low 80s. Okay, yeah. so that will, causes to run a little bit more spring rate to get the wheel rate to where we want it. The more the spring lays back, the less effect it has at the wheel. So we'll have to figure that out on the rear end too. But anyway, it's good to see that this method is matching up quite well with the math method. Yeah. All right, let's do the back. Okay. Okay. 13 and a half. 13 and 5 eighths now, but it's still a lot better. So we'll go to 14 and 5 eighths. 14 and a half. Like that? Yeah. Okay. I'll let it down and we can measure the... Oh. Oh. 
Flying brake pads. Oh, well, I don't need those. No. And we are at. Oh, the so knuckle of the zip tie is half inch, yeah. Wow, so it's still. Yeah. That two to one motion ratio. Yeah. I would not have guessed that. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's do two inches. We'll double check that. Because uh, my wife tells me two inches is better than one. Always. Can I get on that pad there? Yeah, oh yeah. Good? Yeah, go ahead. I'd be here more. And we are there. Okay. Take her down. We only went up a half inch on the first inch. Seven eighths. Three to the first one. Yeah, well, let's, let's, let's reorg. Let's, let's try again. All right, that ends our science session underneath the 510 here. All done sciencing. And what did we learn? Uh, lots of things. We did learn some things. <laughs> we learned that the front end measurement method and wheel movement method pretty much gives us the same thing, yep. as they should, mm -hmm. if we're doing it right. We're thinking we're very close to a one-to-one -one ratio in the front. In the back, things are a little bit more complicated because we've converted to a coilover. Yes. So we weren't sure how that would affect anything. It doesn't look like it has. It amplifies the measurements because the spring's further from the pivot point. Yeah. But we think the change in motion ratio as the wheel moves is the same whether you're measuring from the stock spring location or the outer spring location. Yeah. That's yeah. what we're thinking. It's just a, yeah, it just amplifies. Amplified by the distance, right. So. It seems to start at close to two to one and then it works its way closer to one to one mm -hmm. as we stroke the wheel up higher. So we're gonna average those numbers out and that'll kind of give us a happy medium, I think, for choosing spring rates in the rear. But before we can choose spring rates, we actually need to weigh the car. So we need corner weights and we need unsprung weights as well. Yeah. That all goes into the math that's used to determine spring rates when, when you're choosing springs for a car like this. Do you remember the spring rates on the car, by the way? I believe they're 8K front and either 6 or 5K in the rear. So okay. whatever that works out to in American English. Yeah, yeah. So it's like 450 front, 350 rear, something, or something like, like that. that. Okay. And I think we found that it wasn't enough of a spread based on the original math or something. Yeah, and you were thinking the rear of the car is a bit active, so we want to soften the rear up? Yeah, I was doing some weird things, which could be the frequency difference or, or something. And uh, yeah, it, it was behaving oddly over big bumps, like the last corner coming onto the straight if I hit that bump yeah, or turn that two over nasty. the curve. Yeah, at TMP we have a couple of nasty bumps that really unsettle the car, but we'll try to get it working better. So after JP does all the corner weights and unsprung weights, we'll do some math. Then we're going to go to our friends at iBot Canada. They're going to set us up with some springs and they're also going to set us up with some Coney Sports or yellows. Yeah. So that's all going to go on the car. We'll shoot an episode of that and then we're going to go track test the sucker and see if our math actually worked. But uh, you should show people Madison on the wall there. Uh, I approve of Madison's outfit. It's a proper attire for a shop, wouldn't you agree? And our 90s hip hop reference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has a very nice face. Look at her eyes, they smile as well. Yeah. I'm sure she has a great personality. Oh, I'm sure she does too. She does, she looks kind. She, looks, she has <laughs> kind eyes, she does. N nothing makes a woman seem kind like a string bikini. Get a stop camera time uh, thing there, Ken. That's totally a reality. Yes. He's got a... Stop camera time.